game number two is coming up and game number two could very well be, as you said, the grand final. It's one to zero versus Law Lion. You muted. It's going to be possibly the highlight of the games today. Two of the strongest players in the world meeting, meeting here, uh, former ELL or former uh, newbie teammates and played in the WGTL under ELL together victorious there. Two outstanding players and going to be providing us with a tremendous best of three series here. Winner will be moving up in the upper bracket to go up against Sock and loser will be facing Alice. But whether, in my opinion, uh, regardless of who wins or loses here, even the loser will still be the favorite to make it in second place in the first group. Absolutely. There's, of course, a lot of history for these two players. Both are the standout players. If you look at the Warcraft era from 2015 to 2020 that were not in the old era, of course, we have our Moons, we have our Lins, we have our THs, Infi, but they've all been there in the glory days of Warcraft. These two players that are facing each other now, they are the new dawn of Warcraft. They brought some new spice to the game. 1-0, to zero, the Necromancer, the one who was dragging Undead out of the slump to world championship caliber race. He's still the best gold league player with two finals and two, uh, two, four finals and four wins. But that is long, long time ago. That was actually the first four WGLs where that happened. And this is our 10th edition, our 10th gold anniversary. Is this, though, the strongest 1 2 0 that we've seen since then? Very possibly, yes. I would say it's one of the strongest 1 2 zeros we've seen in quite a while. Last two WGLs, especially, it seemed like he was in the shadow of Happy. Happy, the Emperor from Russia, really took over there and uh, showed the world how strong under the micro can be. Before that, 1 2 0 was in the slump, and before that, he was looking strong. Now the limelight is on him again. Does he thrive under the attention, or does he crumble? We heard from. Um, Snowkiss and some other Chinese sources that he actually uh, quit the relationship with his girlfriend and since then is grinding Warcraft hard. Here's one to zero. Yeah, it's always uh 所以这个种族对操作要求比较高就是可能尽可能的去保存自己的兵力我和卡洛佛选手应该实力上还有种族上都是差不多的我觉得他说他比木文差十个<笑> <laughs> okay, another little taunt by 120. He seems really, really confident in the interviews before. He said he's going to focus his preparation on Moon. So another Night Elf player. He seems really confident against Human and he should with all the results this year. And he seems also very confident against uh, Orc. Yeah. Which is understandably so. So... Yeah, I think he did the analysis right. He has to worry about the Night Elves. Yeah, for him, personally, certainly the case. Uh, 
Happy perhaps as strong as against Night Elf. And that's, you know, kind of his weak race matchup, I guess. And Lawlight here facing him, one of the best in the world with Night Elf. But never crowned a tier one champion. No world championship. He won, he was close. Bronze medals, silver medals, but never the big one. This year though, he finally got the WGTL championship in a team league. He also won Huya. He was really, really damn good. Is it time to become a champion? Oh,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,哦,
the picks and bands here. I dug up some stats and Lolliot on Northern Isles versus Undead, 64%. That's pretty good. Concealed Hills, 74%. That's his best map. So playing the opening on his best map versus Undead seems to be pretty good. Yeah, um, numbers seem to back it up. Question is also, what strategy does he have prepared? Apparently, he practiced most the mar mass archer style, which usually works the best on uh, LR and Echo, but can perhaps also work here. Also, interesting one to zero's vetoes, specifically targeting the warden. That's the one thing he doesn't yes. want to face. Indeed. Okay. Who? This is ultra hype. Will one of them claim the championship? this year is it not gonna be moon but one of these two we go on to concealed hill in the bottom left it is one two zero for china and law light for korea in the upper right there is of course this ongoing storyline of china not able to go to a final for many years now it was happy versus lin it was happy versus moon it was moon versus foggy it's four gcs's ago or four gold leagues ago that China made it there with TH versus Fly in that final. 1 to 0 wants to bring glory back to China. But being teammates for such a long time, this puts some extra spice into this match, I feel. Because, of course, when you do the seedings, you talk a lot about your strength and your weaknesses. And you, you of course, practice a lot together. These two were playing 2 and 2 together. Like, these minds melted for the WGTL, which they successfully won, but... What does it do to you now in the, in the solo competition? Yeah, I hope they can put friendship aside at least for this series and show no mercy because you cannot afford to give the enemy a quarter. These are two of the best players in the world. You need to play your very, very best and be unforgiving. We are starting off here on Concealed. Lala in the top right with a standard Demon Hunter creep route and 1 to 0 with a DK happy build, which means a few ghouls into quick fiends with a quick tech, which normally doesn't mean much aggression early game, but rather tries to transition quickly into a powerful late game. This, by the way, is of course a rematch of Yule Cup 5, but I guess we shouldn't take that as an example because 1 to 0 there was no hero rushing tier 3. That yeah. was just saving builds, trolling around. All these results, we have to take it with a grain of salt. With a big grain of salt. Yeah, absolutely. 1-0, one, one of the most renowned players for uh, playing weird, saving strats, playing unusual styles, even on his top level. But now, so far, this all looks very standard. Hero out early, going for a bit of creeping first. But the Demon Hunter is here to harass right away. And this is uh, what we see quite a bit nowadays, on especially Concealed. Demon standing in the undead base, preventing creeping. It's always a weird situation. Just staring each other down. Nobody's really conti <laughs> continuing to creep. Until now, the Demon does pretend to fall back, but doesn't do so quite yet. The tech is coming in quick. Quickly are both on the way to Tier 2. And the early game is always about gathering as much experience and items as you possibly can. Getting a fast level 3, especially for the Demon Hunter, is a big deal moving towards the mid game. Okay. In our Instagram vote, by the way, 60% said Lawlight is gonna take this. Which is a surprisingly big statement from our community. I thought 1-0 to would be a clearer favorite. They faced two other times in the WGL qualifiers, but WGL qualifiers, these results really, really don't count. So we only have one example of these two facing each other this year. That was the Huya final, which uh, was a 3-0 for 1-0, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it was. Nice move here to creep Big Turtle away and get level 2 right away. Yeah. That's a big deal. The aura on the DK makes a massive difference. The archer was even invis scouting this. The greedy camp by 1 to 0 revealed, and now the light is coming in trying to punish. DK does get level 2 though. Oh, last hit. The aura. Oh, did he steal it? Yes, he did. With the mana nice. burn. That's level 2.2. Stealing experience away from the undead. We all know the late game strength of this race with Coral, with Nova, with insane right clicks. And if there's a counter hero focus, you got that coil most of the time. So taking that experience away is crucial. This early game 
Looking pretty decent for Law Lyad and upper left, there's an expansion coming already. Feeling confident. All right. That is indeed looking quite a bit like the Mass Archer style that Foggy showed in the past. Expanding on the way to tier two, fitting in the Naga later, creeping the natural and then massing archers, going for marksmanship at some point. As we can see, there's no Hunter's Hall, so no lores. Instead, just archers. Yeah, this was introduced by Foggy, I guess, paving the way. And uh, with all these matches of Happy versus Foggy in Europe, there's a good sample site if, if that works and how this works the best. Question is, how familiar is one to zero with this style? And what's his answer at the moment? Naga. Naga second, very good at this point in the game to hunt down the archers. Also, no boots on the Demon Hunter to threaten the enemy Naga because Lolai was saving so many resources for the expansion specifically. Now he's got a lot of gold, Lolai. Is he going to be so greedy as to go to tier 3 quickly? Or what is the plan? 1 to 0 trying to pull out the Ogre Lord and snipe him, but it's not working so easily as Lolai is coming in once again with the creep jack. And of course there's the danger of stealing this Ogre with the mana burn. Should be ready. DK down to 30%, burning the Naga as well. This game plan of 1 to 0 did not work, and Archers and Naga put a lot of damage on the DK. Lolai trying to force him into the town portal. Great blocks! And 1 to 0 has to retreat into his own main base. TP gone! After the first big encounter here, and Ogre still standing. Very good early game so far for Lord Iod, I'd say. Forces the TP, and now he's going tier 3. Now he's feeling safe enough. The Acolyte Scout sees this right away. 1-0 though, in a precarious situation now. Super hurt, but so is the Demon Hunter. But I guess here comes the nice uh, upside of Concealed Hill into play. We have Fountains for free healing. Yeah, and how... How aggressive can 1 to 0 be now? I mean, there's no big crowd control except the Naga, so there's no stun, there's no Dryad slow, you know? But he lost his town portal already. One move of Lawlight that you might not expect, your DK is super low, your Naga is super low. Can you even be aggressive at this point? Yeah, I don't think 1 to 0 can really. I think he has to fall back he already has wait for the lift wait for tier 3 wait for the upgrades to kick in which should be coming soon so that is time for law Lion to creep up now the natural get another ancient of war to go into mass archers soon with marksmanship and very possibly a third hero pod oh yeah mass damage stack up that damage ring of region by the way adds a lot of value to this demon hunter can always take trades move back heals up faster at the fountains so more time on the map for the Demon Hunter, but still struggles to find level 3. And where to get that now? 41 supply for Law Lion. And damage is good. Scout for the Acolyte in the middle again. Does he have enough yeah, damage to steal the Ogre Lord? 1 2 0 is in his own base, so not in punching distance. Law Lion feels comfortable to take out the entire spot. That's pretty confident play here by Law Lion. This could very well turn into a creep jack with tons of archers going down. He's willing to use the TP here to get this camp and then get out. And I think he's going to need to do that as well. Uh, he's trying to walk away. Gets the Helm of Valor. Good for the Demon Hunter. Two archers going down. And Lola is even trying to engage again. He denied the archer and that denied level 3 for the DK. Okay, wow. can't prevent it anymore. Lola seems to be on top of his game. One at this red spot. Of course, there is a chance for this to be a command aura. A... Brilliance Aura. You don't want an undead to have these items. So putting a lot of emphasis into stealing that item when it's kind of easy-ish with the mana burn is a good play. And now the expo is fully mining. We're going to have tons of archers coming out soon. One to zero has two options here. Either go Lich third. Well, that's, he always has to go Lich third. And go for a big push almost all in towards the expo. Or he could try to counter expand. This is also an option. There's another building coming in the main. Is that a second slaughterhouse? If he goes second slaughterhouse going into mass oh. A-bombs, that of course is a great counter to mass archers. Yeah, there will be disease cloud, there will be normal damage, there's a lot of meat. And yeah, archers do good damage, especially with the upgrade that we saw in the Engine of War, the marksmanship. But still, there's good healing on the undead side. Can you kite well enough against the Nova and the Naga so the abominations won't reach you, the disease won't be spread? The light is creeping so greedily, going for the dragon, but 1-0 is ready, I think. Coil snipe, long distance, going for the Naga now. 
D8 trying to create some space and that works. It feels like no one is really ready yet. Yeah, I agree. Potem third is now coming in. That is going to be a big damage boost. Orb of Venom should also be added. Another big damage boost here for Lawlight. When we saw Foggy playing this strat, he was staying on 50 for a long time, going for tons of items. Healed scrolls, invuls, heal pots, anti-magics, orbs. But Lawlight is going into upgrade here pretty, pretty quickly already. Yeah, he has an expansion. He doesn't have to bank at all. He just needs mass. He has the tier 1 units against the tier 3 units. So he needs a lot of them. And so far he's on a decent... Wait, we got... Wait, there was a bug, right? For a second there was an orb of venom on the Naga, but yeah. Uh, it's on the bottom of long line now. Okay. Couple of seconds till disease cloud. And that changes a lot. Yeah, with that, this Undead Force becomes a lot more powerful, especially over time. As 120 said in the interview, the strength of Undead is taking extended engagements and making use of their automatic healing and keeping the units alive for as long as possible. And doubling down on that, the Disease Cloud does a great job there as well, which is now finished. The Double Slaughterhouse here seems to be a very smart idea. Now... He's at 60 supply, can't produce more. Loliath will be on even supply as an engine of war there as well, going for more upgrades. The second one plus marksmanship coming in. Is that enough to deal with the 60 on that supply? Big nuke onto this demon hunter. Oh, he's just dead! Fog lightning coil nova is enough. And now good luck, Loliath, defending this without your first hero. Big mistake not being in range for the staff. Without a demon hunter, there's no burns anymore. Now... 1 to 0 can micro however he wants. Lots of whiffs coming out for the detonates. The position at the expansion is very well fortified. With the moon wells, the ancient of war, the shop, everything. Beautiful build, uh, base build by Lawlight here. Yeah, this looks like Fort Knox, but that wasn't able to save his first hero. Also super low on resources. Can't get the demon hunter back from the tavern with that Naga under pressure. And there's so many spells to use. Coil flies towards that Naga, but there's a little bit of moon to pot him in trouble. Staffed out this time, but in the main base, that's the Oragon. That's a drop in DPS. First abomination is down. Focus fire looks good. Destroyer still in the air. Could be sniped in a bit. <sighs> Lot of vision. Nova, is there a coil? Should be ready in a second. TP out as the pot him is back. With that, keeps the Naga alive, waiting for the demon. How much longer until he's back? Should still be a while. He was level 3. That takes some time. 10 seconds. But did 1 to 0 lose anything? Yeah, he did. Okay, he, he did. lost some A-bomb. Yeah, an A-bomb indeed. Trying to reproduce this now. Lolita switching up to bears for Roar and Riju. And a little bit of meat in front. Strange situation. Again, Lolita hiding behind the engines of war, close to the moon wells. Kind of fascinating how well he's holding on without the Demon Hunter, thanks to this building position. But now he's going for the Naga, and that's the second hero kill for 1-2-0. Looks like he's toying with him a little now. Almost got the pardon there as well, but she does reach level 2 and holds on for a little bit longer. Oh, big Nova. My screen is gray. There we go. No, we don't. My stream is frozen. Okay. Yeah, same here. Well, this game there is only looking awful for Lawlight. Okay, stream is back. Archers, oh my god, how many archer corpses are there? Uh, okay, bottom stemming against the feet, but it's only 35 supply. And this is pretty much nothing. The bear doesn't do anything. The demon hunter is back in the fight, apparently. Trying to kill this destroyer, but moved nicely over the trees. One to zero now with quite the big supply lead. 57. He could fall back now and just counter expand if he wanted to. Also, he can take out the fountain. There's another big drop for him. Very close here to level 4 Naga. 4-4-3 four, four, levels. 
amazing for 1 2 0. I'm kind of surprised to see no frost armor for him, which normally is amazing against the Demon Hunter. Also, not too bad against Naga and uh, Archer Focus. All right, increase the buffer size again. Let's see if this works. What can Lolite do? He's back to 50 somehow. The bear edition was quite nice, but now the bear is gone and he's fighting three abominations. Feels like it's just a matter of time where more and more heroes will be falling for Lawlight. The Demon Hunter is a little caught off guard as well. Can he reach for the shop? Yep, but that doesn't save him. Winner of map one is 1-2-0. One, All right. The Mass Archer style doesn't work out there. 1-2-0 to zero towards the end, very convincingly taking the victory. Did that all come down to the Demon Hunter loss? I it's think so. Of course, so. impossible to say. But let's say he saves that demon. He staffs him back into the main. That was still a dangerous attack by 1 2 0. Could Lolite have held? Possibly, certainly. But would he have held? <laughs> I'm not a Farseer. I'm not riding my wolf uh, casting chain lightnings here and there. So, super hard to say. The game went well for Lolite, I think, up until that point when he seemed to be completely caught off guard by this nuke. Yeah, that's a shame. That's a really simple mistake that should never happen. Being caught out of position with an invul, without an invul, excuse me, when the Naga was not in range for the staff. She was probably getting bugged by her own archers. The beautiful base build there, unfortunately not doing him too many favors. <sighs> a shame that a simple mistake like that determines the game. And yeah, but that, th this is a mistake you... that, that you can't allow this mistake to happen. Yeah, true. But sometimes it happens. True. But on this stage, if this happens, you lose the game. That's uh, that's just yeah. how it is. Yeah, with his mass ultra style, the Demon Hunter is the anchor of your army. He has to soak up all the damage. He has to be healed up, staffed out, moon juice, and so on. He has to continue putting out the damage with his right clicks and burns and Orb of Venom. And also he has to disable the heroes with his mana burn. If he's gone, the whole strategy falls apart. Yeah. It's much worse than, I don't know, if you're playing Farseer first with Orc. Yeah, you can lose that here if you'll have TC and strong units behind. If you lose the Demon Hunter with that, it's just lights out. Yeah. Lack of damage, lack of tankiness, and then it's just free to kill the rest of it. Thank you, Freedom, for the 25 euro donation. Let fly 100% fly over everyone in WGL. Keep up the great work, bros, from back to Warcraft. Thank you, Freedom. We will see Fly tomorrow versus X-Lord. And my stream is stuttering again. I don't know how it is for you. Yeah. It keeps on freezing a little bit every couple of seconds. Okay. You can try to increase the buffer size. I got it at like 2000 MS now. You see the highlights of this game, but there really is only one highlight. And that is this one. The light losing the demon hunter. The backbone of his army, the key to his game, the key to disable the undead units. And yeah. Maybe it's the nerves again in these big turn. Um, he oftentimes, well, maybe he puts a little too much pressure onto him. Yeah, when I talked to him, it didn't sound too confident, really. He has been talking about the Undead matchup for a long time, being hard for him. And 1-0, of course, one of the best, probably the best Undead in the world, even if this is not even his best matchup. Yeah, it's, it's tough to say. He doesn't have a weak matchup, I feel. It's, it's not like um, Happy. Where we know, okay, he's insane against human, insane in the mirror, insane against Night Elf, but against Orc, he, like, he's not the best. We know that. For one to zero, can you make that statement? Is there is there a weak spot? I feel like against certain Night Elves with certain strategies, he has a tendency of getting un outplayed. Well, I should s reduce that to a singular against a certain Night Elf, and that is Moon. <laughs> Yeah. I think if he's going up against Moon, it's going to be really tough. Whereas, for example, Happy, I would see having a really good shot. Um, 
But what he showed here on the first map against Lawlight looked very convincing. And yeah, where Happy's weakness lies against the Orc, their 1 to 0 excels. He is extremely good in that matchup, along with the matchup against Human and the Mirror. Yeah, 1 to 0, as we said, this year has been seeming very strong for him. And this might be the first gold league in a long time where he finally gets really, really far again. I feel like we had this uh, same topic for a couple of times and then boom, all of a sudden he drops out of group stages. But since we don't have round robin anymore, this possibility is very, very unlikely. We could get six playoffs, man. Lawlight 1 to 0, Lin Moon, um, Infi Fly. And Foggy TH, that that would be sick round of eight. Yeah, like whoever we get, it's going to be amazing games. I hope we're going to have some underdog stories as well in the group stage. Yeah. Guagua perhaps could surprise. X Lord perhaps. No, 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 no. You don't start to cheer for my man Linguagua. That is my part later tonight. You can, you can do your cheering for your colorfuls of this world. No, he's a pretty good player. Uh, would be a cool story to see him, or perhaps Alice, but uh, that's going to be rough ones uh, for sure. But normally we do have some surprises in the WGL groups, and we're going to see who that is throughout these next couple of days. Yeah, we go back good. to the maps, and we see now Lolite's choice. Equiles. We do go for the maps. I am still in the studio. Wait a minute. They changed up the map vetoes. These are not the same that we saw earlier. What? Yeah. Earlier it was uh, Northern Isles not vetoed. Now it is Northern Isles vetoed. Okay, so there seemed to be a bit of a mistake with that earlier. So these seem to be the real vetoes. Makes sense with what Lolai talked about previously. And Echo Isles, that is suddenly a possible warden map. All right. Is it now, is it working for you? Very stuttery. I just get a gray screen at the moment. Try to increase the network buffer, but... <sighs> yeah, guys, uh, we are just as disappointed with this... Uh... With these circumstances as you are, but these are what we were given. Yeah, we will... Like, worst case, we go to a Chinese Doyu stream without sound. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that kills the hype a bit. We're very, very sorry. Day one of the Gold League is oftentimes a cursed day. But together, we can fight through this. Thank you for your kind words in chat and everywhere. Yeah, so the Chinese Doyu stream is working for me so much better than the clean feed. Okay, for me, it doesn't start. Are you on the Blizzard one? Yeah. Okay. Getting there now. What the? This is so bugged. So we're going to be going to Echo Isles here in a moment. Is this the time where Warden is played by Lawlight? His special weapon. His favorite hero, his best hero. The one where he always looks the most amazing with. He even was able to beat Happy 2-0 in a crazy best of three ones with her. Only him, nobody else could ever do that. Dude, can you put... Oh, okay. I think I'm almost there. Warden, uh, I can see it now, will indeed be the choice. Lawlight moving away from the Demon Hunter, moving away from the mass archer strategy, which worked well for a while. It seemed like Lawlight got inspired by Foggy for this strat, but in Europe, especially in the ESL Open Cups, 
we kind of saw how happy got better and better against it. And I'm not sure that Mass Archers on the very highest level is really all that good. So I don't mind seeing him here switching it up at all and going for the Warden. I would be concerned if it was anybody else playing her, but it is Law Liot, so absolutely can work. Okay, I think I got everything to... What the... Got everything to work now. Uh, sorry for the quality, but stability over quality, I guess. Okay, we see the Warden trying to pummel the DK. Back to the hero that made him so famous and so successful. Yeah, no experience yet, though. One to zero's aggressive move kind of scared Law Light. He did not go for the Murkab creep. You can sometimes gamble for it and hope and play against the undead's harass. And oftentimes it's not that good, but Law Light plays it really safe here. Respects the harass potential and barely has any experience here so far. If he gets the last hit on the Ogre Warrior, that would be pretty nice, but Coil secures it for the DK. One ghoul is taken out, but, but denied. was denied, yeah, by the DK. Damn, what One to zero. zero looking pretty hot so far. I agree. He has no mercy for his former teammate. Law Light needs to get something done. We've said the same with Alice before, where the start with the Warden wasn't too great. Warden was moving over across the entire map. At least Law Light can creep at the same time to get the Warden. That's so important. Level two. Get the Claws of Attack. Wait. Okay. This inventory is so confusing <laughs> with the Rod of Necromancy at the Warden's. Uh... But anyway. Gotta ignore that. Getting the next big item here. Crystal Ball. Oh boy. Crystal Ball and Ring for the Warden. It might actually be pretty good for scouting now and maybe later against the Fiends, but of course it's no mana. It's no right-click damage, so it's not the ideal thing you would have liked to find. Where's the DK with the Claws off to a good start in the level 2? Not trying to further slow down the Warden's creeping at all is 1 to 0, but rather just continues creeping up himself, freely giving the Warden level 3. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. And that opens the door for the Warden to take control of the mid-game, possibly. Yeah, this is a little weird. Not too sure if that's the right thing to do. But of course, one two zero knows a lot better than me. Probably preparing a big timing push. We see the Lich, we see the Rush Tier 3 tech and the Slaughterhouse. So no, not moving away, not the uh, mass ghouling or something. Yeah, that is a really fast Tier 3 indeed. There's no second Necro, so Acolyte kills could come in and be very painful. And yeah, but 1-2-0 is ready. Yeah, 1-2-0 at home at the perfect time. Reads him like a book. Will delay level 3 for this, but so worth it. He just started the tag, and Shadow Strike can deal with the Acolytes relatively easy. Lolite can't just unfold his game. He's always getting something done at the same time, while the Warden tries to harass. But you want more, and you need more. Yeah. She needs lots of levels. If he doesn't get level 5 by the tier 3 stage, he's completely weak uh, at that point in the game, at around 50 supply. And of course, needs items as well. Sniping, now the Ogre Magi. DK can not steal it. It's a big invul for the Warden, and good experience. Okay, but still no level 4 for the cheap blink. So tier 3 on the way as well. Dryads and bears and maybe mountain giants. Does 1 to 0 have the power to break through the MGs? This is the late game question. So far there's no expansion yet, so not much threat across the map to be aggressive on to zero. Again, perfect timing intercepting the warden. How does he know this so well? Yeah, right. He just he just feels <laughs> it in his in his bones. Sixth sense one two zero. 
countering this warden so hard. All these shadow strikes don't do anything. Yeah, he didn't get a single fiend kill yet. He killed nope. like one ghoul in the early, and that one was denied. Great engine of war creeping though by Lawlight, as always. He's going for the turtle bottom right, and that's going to be level four for her. It's always a very nice feel good level up for the warden for the easy and cheap blink. Oh, let's check the marketplace. Time for more claws, perhaps? Hells yeah. Double claws and or pushing into the main. And there's no AP here defensively set up. Okay, this is going to be incredibly hard. Super welts are coming very, very early to help the warden with her mana. But once again, he has to rely on a very strong hero. The army is far away. I don't think this is a push designed to kill Lolai yet, but it could very well be. He is supply stuck. He can't go for more bears or even MG. Can't even think of MGs. Yeah, with the healing here of Coil and Statue, it's really hard to take even the ghouls out. But now with the Dryads coming in, it becomes more possible. Seems like they don't have Abolish yet, unfortunately, to dispel the Frost Armor. That one's helping quite a bit. But one ghoul goes down. Second ghoul almost falling. Warden also taking a lot of damage. Nova's Nova good. And again, he takes out so much damage. This time ignoring the Warden for the most part. But the damage, the ghouls are still alive. Like a minute into this fight, and is he saving all of them? Okay, one down, two down, three down. Warden finally getting something done and getting closer to level five. I think one zero was a little over eager here. He could have just crept up the rest of the map, go for a third hero, become oh. very strong with the heroes himself. Fiend falling, and the destroyers pretty slowed down. Next fiend falling over aggressive one to zero indeed. 41 supplies. Still, Lalaid is struggling, but he's getting so much done. TP out now. The Lich in trouble. The Lich in big trouble and dies. What Foggy tried a million times against Happy and didn't work. Lalaid gets it done. And all of a sudden, the door to game three is wide open. Yeah, it's looking great now for Lalaid. This must be an, an expansion right away for him. With level five Warden, she's tr finally... Pretty strong. She's still not incredibly strong, but the problem for 1 to 0 is he doesn't have those super strong heroes himself to go up against that. If he had level 4 DK, level 3 Lich, and a level 2 Dark Ranger, he would have a strong lineup, but he doesn't even have a third hero. The Lich is dead, stuck on level 2. It's a little unfortunate that I think the tree denied the Lich, otherwise it would be level 5.6 Warden or something. But man, what a defense! And again, the Warden. If one player knows how to do it, it's definitely him. And what's next? I guess... Acolyte hunting. Taking out the ghouls first. 1-0 to zero is very low on lumber. This could hurt upgrade-wise. Yeah, it also hurts in the gold. This hurts everywhere. The Warden doesn't even have a tele staff here to get out, but she does have Blink. And is doing so much damage in the main. This time the DK wasn't ready. This time this damage is not prevented. And this time the hero stayed alive. A-bombs out now. No big threat on that warden. With having an invo potion and blink. So damage done. Look at the gold. There's pretty much no income at the moment. Both at 50. Lolayet had to reproduce moon wills. Had to rebuild them. That was expensive. Not everything went into items and upgrades and army. One to zero is at the shop. <laughs> Invo potion, it seems, and heal scroll. Seemingly wanting to go for another fight. Oh, lie, did not expand yet. Seems like one to zero is expecting that tree down here. Very natural to do so, but no. It's not there. What's Lolai doing in the meantime? This would be usually the time for Mountain Giant upgrades, but we don't see those. Only Dry and Bear upgrades on their way to 2-2. Yeah, a lot of them. Lolai has 500 gold. Is he a little too cheap? Not willing to break up keep. And a, you know, almost losing a moon well. Two bears, couple of Dryads. Engine of War is getting in position as well. Didn't expect this angle of attack as it seems. Statue on the ground. 
bears. He should be able to deal with them rather quickly, but Lawlight moves them back both and goes into Fiend Hunt once again. The Abomination is taking so much damage from the Dryad that poison stacks and a bomb is gone. And with that, the big front line opens up the way to Fiend's Heroes Destroyers. And this destroyer doesn't look good at all. Good movement though. And Burrow used. Reveal immediately. Quick reaction by Lawlight. Losing a bear for it. But if he gets the destroyer, that was definitely worth it. And the Warden again in the back, taking care of these fiends, even uh, almost saving the bear. But we got level 6, and that can only mean one thing. Avatar goes for this Lich once again. There is an Invo Potion and Frost. Oh, but what was that? Just killed him off with another Shadow Strike. And that is the 1-1. One -one. Well played by Lawlight. Once again, the Warden comes to the rescue. And his favorite hero keeps all its chances alive. Unbelievable. Well played by him. But honestly, 1 to 0, what the hell was that? <laughs> that was just like the weirdest. I'm sorry to use that word, but I think it's kind of fitting. Brain dead push into the main. <laughs> He's wow. just like, all right, I have two fiends, four ghouls, and two statues. I guess this is where I can win the game. And it's like, no, no, there's Moonwells there. There's. Uh, Always potions there, there's dryers, there's bears. No, you can't win the game like that. If he just falls back, if he just gets a third hero, creeps up the map, and just steals the creeps away from the warden, maybe he gets a tele staff to be safe against the warden harass shenanigans. That could have been an option. Dark Ranger third, very important. Maybe go into two base, two base, very long down the road. This, I don't think, was the play. I think he just wanted to delay the night of progress keep the warden busy in his base maybe delay breaking upkeep and then he got too greedy and then he wanted more he saw an opportunity because the early stages of the fight went pretty good for him i think but then everything fell apart he just he was just standing there like 30 seconds too long and lol i had capitalized it uh on it very very hard yeah i mean such a weird decision. Like, you know where your opponent is going Shadow Strike and Dryad. And you're going in there with a lot of ghouls. Like, of course ghouls are going to get completely demolished by that. There were a few nice coils there. He kept the ghouls alive pretty well for a decent amount of time. But you can't do that forever. That was a big mystery by 1-0. to zero. It seemed like he thought he was super far ahead. But he really wasn't. Yeah, we see it here. You see it here and then this fight, man. He kept these bears alive for so long. I don't even know how he did this. Was there a lot of heal spells? I'm not too sure. And now this damage on the ledge. There was an invo potion, but he just didn't... Yeah, he wanted to coil, was a little greedy, didn't want to go for the item. And that's how you win yourself a game. All going down to one more map here. And that map... Which one was it again? I think it was a non-warden map, right? Yeah. LR was vetoed. Right? He didn't want to play LR. I think it's AZ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One to zero's pick is AZ. Yep. Ooh, we've seen crazy games on AZ in this match. Remind Lucifer, rings yeah. a bell. And normally here, Warden is never played. But guess what? Warden was introduced on that map a few years ago against Human. And of course, who was it that did it? It was Law Alliance. It Law Alliance. It's not supposed to work. But Warden in general is not supposed to work against Undead most of the time. But this is Law Alliance, so... Let's see what he shows us. The stream, by the way, is working again for me. So I'm going to use that because sound and stuff. <laughs> Ooh, this is pretty damn hype. Will it be in Cor a Korean winner bracket final between Lawlight and Sock? Or will we have a human versus undead in 1 to 0 versus Sock? One map will decide this. Who's going to get the better start into the tournament? Who will leave day one with a smile on their face? 
Both seem pretty concentrated, waiting for the go. Little check to the side, is the cat in keyboard range or is everything all right? Everything seems to be all right. Last moments of concentration before the game begins. And we kick things off. In the upper right on Amazonia, on his map, it's 1-2-0. Facing the master of the warden. Will he unreal her on AZ as well? Or is it keeper? Or is it demon hunter? Pretty much everything is possible with this kid. On AZ, Lawlight with a 57% win rate versus Undead. 1-2-0 with a 66% win rate versus Night Elf. So it's okay. It's pretty even. Straight down the, down the line. Both players close to the top 10 of the best Warcraft players of all time in terms of earnings. That's pretty damn crazy in just five years. Yeah, absolutely. As far as opening builds go, 1-0 to zero does not stray away from the happy build. He goes for it once again, and the hero for Lawlight is not the Warden. It is the Demon Hunter. Yeah, even Happy, the creator of the happy build, on this map, Amazonia, nowadays mostly plays a ghoul opening, somewhat old school, because how because of how good it can be for creeping. You go for the lightning shield creep first for a quick level two into the middle where the kobolds can easily be crapped for level three. And beyond that, you can even with ghouls go for the merc camp snipes of the renegade pretty easily. But one to zero is not doing this. He's going for the graveyard early, transitioning into fiends pretty quick. So these heavy creep options, not really available to the undead. Okay, could be a good start. If he's not denying anything, which he usually never does. Like, Lawlight is one of the very few Night Elves who I, I never see him do creep mistakes. So here we go. Lightning Shield on the Archer, creeping two spots pretty much at the same time to speed things up. Lures the right creep into the left creep to use the Lightning Shield on everything. That's pretty yeah, it fast. Actually the, it was the Acolyte pulling in the green you camp, trying to mess up this creep a little bit. Ah. And this forces a tiny bit of Wisp repair. This might become relevant for the tier 2 tech timing. And 1 to 0 is creeping kind of the Night Elves trolls away with a single ghoul. There's a lot of tiny nuanced adjustments here made by both. But the Demon Hunter finds amazing items with circlet and slippers. Plus five damage already. DK is kind of happy with more mana as well. But that mana will be gone in a bit. As the Demon Hunter comes in for the harass. Who has the better nerves? Who has this extra strike of genius? Oh, detonate would be good. Oh, it was really good. Three skeletons and mana burned. The ghoul is saved. But yeah, those skeletons were good XP. It's a lot about level oh, threes here. Oh, could trap people. him. He could definitely trap him. Oh, my. Well oiled up Demon Hunter. Able to escape to the left hand side. Would love to know the tech timing here. It's very important for the tier two second hero edition of Naga, which. I imagine should be the choice for both. Depending on how well the Demon Hunter levels, he's continuing to creep now at the Trolls. If the Demon gets to 3 early with Boots, normally that should rule out a Naga on the Undead side. Oh, wow, that creep by 1-0. to zero. How greedy at the natural. But nobody ever does this. And well, nobody, I, of course, not scouting for it. Nobody ever expects this. If he moves north and sees this, but... This is exactly the purpose of this creep. Evasion creeping, not creep where your opponent expects you to. Even if it takes longer, even if you take more damage, you will dodge the harassing DH. That plan was quite good. Big healing. Doing this all with only four ghouls. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, one to zero. Or was it five? Um, it's I'm four or sure. five ghouls, and his lumber still seems to be looking okay. Crazy. He knows about it now. 
Was can, oh, does he want to detonate to prevent an expansion, maybe? This also means that the top position expansion is crept early. So by far the juiciest part of the map now is bottom right, where the Merc Camp and the Gold Mine are still available. Red Camps, of course, later also will become relevant, but that's going to be a little while. Boots now for the Demon. And creeping level 3. Crazy. Okay, Coil secures three. It was a big one. Not the big one. But prevents level three. Here we go. And now the big mana burn. And that's the sign for one, two, zero to just back off. We do have boots on the Demon Hunter. So he can follow the DK around. And it's a Naga second. For Law Light. Yeah, which second for one, two, zero. Can't afford to go for a Naga himself either. Naga, you want to play aggressively, but playing aggressively yeah, against a Demon 3 with boots just doesn't work out. We have a lore coming. Lolite is delaying his tier 3 here compared to his opponent. But normally, one lore into tier 3 is kind of what we're used to seeing nowadays. Lich is coming, yeah. Slower approach to this matchup. Not the ultra aggression that we used to see him against, for example, a Happy or against Human. Takes it back a notch. Knows he accomplished level 3. That is pretty good. Can't contest the middle because of the Naga. Because of his late Lich. Just doesn't have the firepower. It's distracting. So Lolai can't use his power spike too well at the moment. But the Lich is here now. Nova burns right away. Dives quite a bit for this. As the Naga and the Archers are busy with the Taskmaster. Okay, Naga gets it. Fort Lightning available. Could use it. No, heal potion. Demon Hunter in trouble now. Has a TP. Can get out. No staff. But the ghouls, they were in to help a little here. Now they get taken out. Ooh, so important, this fight here. Naga Great mid-game for Lolai. He claims both camps. He takes out two ghouls. DK Lich not leveling. Lots of mana burned. And I think 1-0 to zero again makes the wrong read that yeah. he should be contesting this when rather he should be just creeping elsewhere, probably. Yeah, this is exactly what he didn't want to happen. Picking that fight here, maybe he thought, okay, I got two ghouls here, I got my lich here, now I'm ready. But he wasn't. Not against the level 2 demon uh, mana burn. With the demon hunter played aggressively like this, like immediately, he was just jumping on this lich. Like, you will not cast a second Nova, my friend. And he took that away. Also, no coil to take him out here. That was well done. Naga now solo creeping at the natural in the south. It's going to be her getting close to level 3. Bea should be coming soon with that. Maybe the Merc Camp can be taken. Big item also here to be found. Invul. Big Invul. That's great. It's another thing that uh, 1 to 0 lost. His big heal pot from his natural. Also gone forever. Yeah, he had to use that to save the Lich for the first time. But we got an orb now. This changes a lot as well. Naga isn't finished here. It's the army of Lolai. It, it's it's not big. It's not powerful. It's not scary. It's a couple of archers and a dryad. It's again a lot about the heroes, especially the first hero. And this is such a great job, though. Yeah. He absolutely is. He prevents a super high level Lich. He the inventory for the Lich isn't too scary. We don't see a Super Lich here that takes out the Dryad single-handedly. Naga got her level 3 down there at the Merc Camp. Sobi Mask for her. Amazing. It's going to be so many Fog Lightnings to use. Against Fiends, that's really good. And You see this Demon Hunter. You would love to nuke him, but he did his job. There is no... Oh, there's no mana. And there's no Destroyer against this Reju yet. Like climbing towards 50 supply. It's always 1 2 0. They haven't lost too much yet. Two ghouls versus one archer. But the big fights are still approaching. Oh, he wants to take this fight and expand on the back of it? At 43 supply? There's a wisp up there to scout this. Yep. That's pretty cool, though. With the. Uh, skull that was used in the early for creeping. Now he's set setting up a tower. And as we all know, narrow <laughs> towers, man. Pretty strong. Feed the meme. Okay. Upper. Position, by the way. 
scouting is real good. The timings on Echo Isles for 1 to 0 were really, really good, and now it seems to be the other way around for Lolaid. For now. But I can only imagine that there's going to be a dust very soon, or he parked something at the lab. Get a staff now, has an orb now. And still no level 3 lich, not even close. He's gonna have a narrow up here soon. And all jokes aside, that is a very strong fortifying structure. Expansion getting cancelled. But he's getting at least one camp for this. Maybe mm -hmm. two. This is not bad for the light at all. This is actually really good. Part of giant strength. 1 to 0 nukes quite a bit, or nuked quite a bit in this series, so having more HP is nice. Expo cancelled, but okay, it was probably a tactical expansion, like if it went through, nice. If not, you are here while I am in the north, and yeah, just look at the right click of the demon hunter, so powerful. This was no army, this was just first hero alone. And force the coil, that's the second one, one archer in return. But that's it. With the burrow. Lolaid is reminded to perhaps get a dust, but he is slot starved with only dual hero that happens pretty quick. 1 2 0 also playing only two heroes. Yeah. I feel like we see this a little more in this matchup than one month ago. For the high level Cryo Nova and Frost Armor, of course, but. I'm not sure you rarely ever have mana. Do you want a hero that is not relying on mana like an Naga? Yeah, it's difficult to fit her in in this kind of game. You couldn't go for her as a second hero because of the strength of the demon. And it's weird to go for her now as a third hero because the map is so hard to creep. This is one of the big reasons why this map is very good for Night Elf in this matchup normally. So when you're 1 to 0, what can stop this demon hunter? Three destroyers in the air. He wants to take out the bears a lot faster than in the game prior, but just doesn't seem to work. Lolayet finding a way to protect bears a little longer than the average night elf. Oh, and he does add in a naga now. His additional slow with the cold arrow, more control against this demon hunter. Okay. Only level 1 and easy to right click for lightning use. Naga down to 50%. So is the demon. Mana on ma mana potion on the DK who's diving deep and getting a lot of hits from the backline. But that is all not ending up on the units. And the DK should be safe even without death pack. Now switching the targets. Destroyer down to 50%. Everything is at 50%. But he's not finding kills. Let's see how this goes. Destroyer finally taken out. That's level 4. And the second destroyer... Super hard to move, thanks to all the dryads as well. Demon Hunter, though, needs a staff. Naga, is it ready this time? The coil was already in the air. Doesn't connect, though. Clutch staff right there. Yeah. Mana low everywhere, except on the Night Elf side. The Naga for Lawlight, so plenty of Fog Lightnings to use. Going for the DK now. There's no TP anymore, but there is an invul. No, okay, last second. Naga in trouble, getting blocked by your own archer. Staffed out as well. Uh-oh, Lawlight, this is not looking too great for you. He's finding kills again, going for the DK. Wants him out of here, but without a TP. It's so rough. Dust settles, equal supply. And guess what? Both Expos up. Moving towards the super late game here. Hero level starting to get really high. 4-4 four, four against 3-2-1. Lolite with a slight lead in hero levels. Fog Ooh. Lightning, another kill for him. Getting the Naga would be great, but he gets Not away. Boro used. There's no firepower in Lolite anymore. And it's becoming a little too risky if the staff is on cooldown. Fog Lightning again, staff out. The traits are start to be better and better for Lolite. Always Archer versus Fiend, Dryad versus Fiend. And this is all before Mountain Giants, by the way. Yeah. This is going to be a lot, going to be becoming a lot better once MGs are ready. Yeah. This is also no Abominations and Disease Cloud. Both yeah. still have something left in the tank. Demon Hunter starting to burn. Oh, Naga, a little bit out of position. What's she doing there? Of course, no staff for the undead side. Trying to trigger one of the items that he got right here, but not the case. 
DK and focus again. No item on him. Focus fire is a little spread. Now deciding to go for the destroyer. And again, how many destroyers did he take out? Amazonia, of course, a map where you oftentimes fight in an open battle. Going for the slit. Not connecting with the demon hunter, though. It's time for a staff. Soon, fork lightning. Barely escaping. Dryad shot is not enough. And the statues heal against it. Clutch safe again. But it feels like it's just a matter of time until Lolai chokes him out. Well, it's still 1-0 on two bases, though. And as you said, the A-bombs are still coming. That's going to be a very powerful transition. I think 1-0 perhaps should be going to double Slaughterhouse again. He certainly has the resources for it. Lolai, greedy. Going for the red spot. Making sure that he knows when the Night of is approaching. But there's no time. There's absolutely no time. 1-0 wants to fight again. 70 Night of Supply. This doesn't look like an MG transition to me. It's just giant bears. Yeah, MG's perhaps taking too long. Lawlight wants to keep up the momentum as best as possible and claim perhaps some creep camps with that. Or at least Ooh. keep on fighting, keep on burning, keep on finding kills. He has Another backpack, by the way, on the bears. Really nice. Reinforcements can bring in new items if necessary. Lich once again in trouble. And once more, he catches the destroyer. Always five supply, always big experience. Oh, but that's safe here. Demon Hunter willing to dive. Mana burn for pretty much nothing. Invo potion, fog lightning again, makes it to the shop with the potion. High class Warcraft right here, but the Korean Night Elf is just moving forward and forward. This destroyer falling, Demon Hunter in trouble. Not again! He's just losing him again. Trades it though for the DK. What's it? Be who's it better for? Good firepower, of course. Four one to zero can hide in his base. Bears moving forward. Want this Naga? Want this Naga? Bad, but there was another potion. Naga no level five for all light. The fog lightning super powerful. Perhaps not enough mana though. This Naga is running forward, fearing nothing. Going for the <laughs> Lich kill with the slow. That might be good enough with the fog lightning. She did have the mana, and that's the GG. And Lawlight wins this game. Korean winner bracket final confirmed. The trade was well worth it. If there's no DK, no coil, no aura. And Lawlight showing once again that he might be in the best shape of his life. Yeah, game one there was shaky with that Demon Hunter loss. But game two, 1-0 to zero with a big wrong decision in the late game. And game three... This was a big mistake in the mid game, contesting the middle, and perhaps the wrong build on AZ to not go for a ghoul opening. And I must say, I'm kind of disappointed with 1 to 0 here a little bit. He doesn't look like he's stomping all his opponents left, right, and center. It's not like he was overwhelmed by items or surprising creep routes, it was oftentimes his fault. Yeah. By taking fights that he shouldn't take. It was his decision making that cost him these games on map two and three. Especially like map three is hard. Like it's hard to give up the middle and the demon was strong. AZ doesn't leave you many good options, but especially on Echo Isles, that should have been his game if everything goes according to plan. And you know what the plan is here, by the way? Um, Lawliot is having the interview with WGL, and then he's having the interview with B2W. We're going to have the Korean on the show. Of course, he has to uh, please the Chinese crowd first, and then we will ask him about the games and his opinion on WGL and how he's if he's looking forward to the, to the winner bracket final against Sock that is coming next. That's it for group A today. So what's the takeaway from group A so far? Sock looking decent in the late game. Alice competitive, but not quite on the same level. Lawlight really good with some very few minor mistakes and one to zero with some worrying reads that went completely wrong and uh, him having some problems with his decision making. That's what I would say. Do you think he's in trouble of not making it to the round of eight? If he plays like today? Not really. I think he's going to outplay Alice no matter what. Even if he makes mistakes, I don't think Alice can punish them. And against human, the game is really simple. You don't need to have good decision making. 
He makes an expo, you attack the expo, you either kill it or you don't. It's like exec it's execution based, not so much decision based. So I think even if those flaws remain for one to zero, I think he should still be fine. Okay. But in the round of eight, he's gonna need to make better decisions. Yeah, he will have some time to make adjustments. Again, he practiced quite a bit against Knight of probably, so having Alice as the next opponent shouldn't worry him too much. But again, not a good day for China in the Gold League so far, but judging from the next upcoming matches, it won't be much better as we have Lin versus Linguagua and Moon versus Colorful. It could be a 4-0 for Korea today. Would be kind of WGL typical, where Korea is always doing well. And I guess that's kind of to be expected for today's results, at least. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Korea seems to be the dominant country of Warcraft at the moment. With yeah, three people who just win tournaments left, right, and center. And the Chinese gods not showing up anymore, so... the Moon, Lin, Lolai, they capitalize from it the most, for sure. So, the Chinese are trying to get Lolai on, I guess. So, in case you missed the news, we have a post-show here today, talking all the games with Side and Arc. Tomorrow is going to be Neutron and Knopf. Maybe we get uh, Neutron on the show later as well. He's already hot. He wants to talk about the games. He's spamming me on Discord pretty much. Um, and we have a pre-show every single day that there is WGL Games with the host, or the former host, I might say, uh, of WGL. That is Snow Kiss. Usually you see her on the big stage here in Shanghai, but since she's living in Australia, no chance for her to be here. And I guess they tried to go for an interview Again, I don't know if they mute this. I think they do. Maybe there's some Korean or Chinese in chat who can translate. Can translate. So, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, 好，那第一个问题是，呃，在第一场比赛里面，当120来进攻你的时候，呃，你的恶魔猎手被秒杀了，你觉得这是不是造成你输掉第一分的一个关键的原因呢？呃，일단 네, 제가 리플레이를 다시 봤는데 그 데몬이 안 죽었으면 막을 수 있는 상황이었던 걸로 일단 생각이 되고요. 그 경기 좀 많이 준비했었는데 그 아이디를 제 계정이 아니고 새로 받아서 쓰다 보니까 제가 숙 선수한테도 이제 사전에 해야 되는 걸좀 듣고 나머진 다 체크했는데 그 아까 뭐였죠? 그 움직이는 거가 진영 유지가 켜져 있는 걸 제가 안 꺼가지고 데몬이 잘안 움직여가지고. 네, 거기서 죽게 돼서 좀 1경기는 좀 아쉬운 것 같아요. 呃，对，主要是第一场的话，他重新看了一下replay，然后发现如果DH没有死的话，这局还是可以赢下来的，因为这一场的战术是他精心准备的，然后可能也是因为他之前拿到了那个比赛用的账号，然后之前Soph也给
啊、哦，看来还是有这个失误在里面。好，那问一下决胜局的情况吧。决胜局的时候，其实当时幺二零和这个 l o l i t 都是有双矿在运作。那其实呃，幺二零在经济上并不吃亏，但是他却选择了一个比较呃凶猛的打法，一直是压制这个 l o l i t 的二矿。但是反而是吃了亏，被劳雷特一路是压回了主基地，最后输掉了比赛。那现在复盘一下的话，劳雷特会怎么看待当时幺二零的选择？그마지막경기때그두선수다멀티가있는상황에서일리공선수가로라이선수멀티쪽으로계속견제견제하고있었잖아요그러다가그다시본진으로돌아가게됐는데만약그일리공선수이경기에대해서어떻게생각하세요이런플레이에대해서어떻게생각하세요어사실일리공선수가아마존니아를안좋아해서저는당연히그헤레나스아마존니아를끌거라고생각하고아마존니아준비를아예안했었거든요그래서사실뭐오늘플레이자체가일리공선수의스타일자체를예상도못하고해가지고좀당황하긴했는데좀일리공선수도아마존니아가자신이없다보니까그냥플레이한것같은데뭐그렇게나쁜플레이는아니었던것같아요음주아씨之前的话，因为他知道幺二零不是很喜欢亚马逊这张图，所以他预测的是幺二零会搬掉 T S 跟亚马逊，但是最后幺二零是选择了亚马逊做自己的败者图，然后他觉得这场比赛其实幺二零可能是因为没有没有准备什么，所以就按正常的打，但是整体来说幺二零选手的发挥的话都是没有什么问题的。好的，那么对于劳雷特来说，再赢一场比赛就可以晋级到这个八强当中了。而下一场要面对的是同样来自韩国的人族选手，不知道此前他们之间的这个比赛或者练习的胜率怎么样，有没有信心？그팔강진출하려면지금한경기가남아있잖아요정옥선수를이겨야팔강진출하는혹시그이번에따로두명서로승률이어떻고준비한거있어요일단속선수하고는당연히경기상대이기때문에그따로같이연습하지않아서승률은잘모르겠고요일단은그속선수도그렇고이제패자조에같이멜리공선수도그렇고제가굉장히좋아하는선수들이있기때문에어제가이제그싸우는건좀그렇고둘이좀싸워서이기이겨서이긴사람이올라갔으면좋겠어서일단은그냥제가이기고팔강가고싶네요고기이기고呃，首先，因为他跟 s o 呃分到了一个小组，所以他们两个没有进行对练，所以胜率的话，他也，嗯，现在不好说。但是，呃 s o 跟幺二零选手都是他非常喜欢的选手，希望他们两个可以相互的，就是他们两个打一下，看看谁能晋级，然后以及希望他可以赢下下一场，直接晋级八强赛。好的，感谢劳雷斯接受我们的采访，也祝他后面的比赛好运。<笑> All right, that was Lolite interviewed on the Chinese stream, and now we will get him on the line. I will call through Discord. Uh, get Remo on it as well. I think you have to move yourself in Groovio or something. Eh, uh, there we go. So let's see if this is working. Lolite, are you here? There I am, Lalaid. Are you here? Yes. I Hello. Am. Congratulations to your win. Thank you very much. <laughs> Did you expect to win? No, get... of course not. Of... Why, of course not? Oh, well, because Wonto Zero is a really good UD player. So and and it's hard to beat against Wonto Zero. So I don't have confidence. But you're a very good night elf player, so you can beat him. Yeah, it's packed, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure because um I don't know. Want zero and happy is really hard to beat. They are really good, awesome player. I think today you played a very very good series with just one mistake. Do you think yeah. the same, or can you play even better? Uh. Oh, you you mean first game? The entire series. Uh, maybe if I use my own account, then my play will be better. 
Uh, today I use uh, they give some new account, so not no setting. Ah. So my condition is not best. So we saw that you lost the demon hunter. It, yeah. On the first map. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> really sad. Was that because of the settings? Yes. Uh, I don't know how to say in English. Uh, if uh group one is DH and Archer with one one group, mm -hmm. then moving is slow and sometimes not moving. Ah, okay. I, yeah. I uh, move at the same speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Ah, like, like okay. It. Yeah, yeah. Um, on map two, Echo Isles, um, one to zero, push into your base pretty early. If he doesn't do that, if he just creeps the map instead, uh, you think that's better for him or worse for him? Do you think he had to attack you right there? Because it seemed like a weird choice. Uh, I don't understand. Um, you th when, when he attacked you on Echo Isles, uh -huh. you think that was good by him or is it, you think it was bad by him to attack you into your base? Uh, when? Uh, on the second map? Uh, on Echo Isles, when, uh, yeah, in yeah, late yeah. game, when you have Warden level 4, he attacked ah. you with uh, with ghouls and fiends ah. and heroes. Okay, I understand. Uh, that time is not good, because if, if he choose third hero alchemist, then mm -hmm. maybe it will be better. But uh, I don't use pen of knife, so I don't care. <laughs> so I think uh, his push, his timing is really bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was uh, wondering the same thing. Also about the vetoes, we talked about this earlier. Uh, you were considering Concealed Hill or Last yeah. Refuge for veto. So mm -hmm. why did you decide to veto Last Refuge? Because one to zero really, really liked that map. So I ah, veto okay. LR. Next time, maybe I will try LR. No <laughs> more shades. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So your next opponent is Sock. Yeah. You, of course, know him very, very well. And you beat him a lot with human. So will you play human? <laughs> uh, it may be if I try uh, one year, then I can beat him on my human. But <laughs> in this day, I, I, I just play on your night help. So no more human and no more other race. Because Maybe neither. Next next time I'll try UD. Because <laughs> load is really good. I because think. it's so easy. <laughs> Not easy, but <laughs> it's uh, so fun, fun to play. Yeah, right. Coil Nova win, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 not win. Just, just fun. Just yeah. enjoy. Um, so we know that you love to play uh, KOG and many archers. Uh, mm -hmm. And you beat every human with it. Yeah, but uh, in this day, I played with TH and Chemical a lot of games for practice. But they know how to beat KOG. So how? It's secret. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe I will use Warden or TH. Okay. Yeah. We will uh, be watching and we wish you all the best for the day after tomorrow. But it's a uh, little sad news is if I won this group goes uh, quarterfinals, mm -hmm. then I will meet Moon or Lin. It's really sad. Or colorful. Yeah, or colorful. <laughs> 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 or Lin Kwa Kwa. Oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think we will talk about the playoffs once you are there and once you have defeated Sock. Um, and then we make some strategies how to beat them together. Oh, okay. Let me think. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that's it. We don't want to steal more time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. No. no. Fighting, fighting for kissing. And hello, guys. Are you watching? Back to Warcraft. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> no light. You're bye the bye. best. All the best. And bye bye. yeah. He's just the best. Oh, he's so amazing. He is the best. 
Ah, great to hear from him. Great to see him here successful um, and very possibly making it through to the top eight. Indeed. We move away from group A, where we had the following results. Sock defeating Alice, Lolai defeating 1-2-0, and we will go into group B now. That is the group, as we mentioned here, of Moon, Lin, Colorful, and Ling Guagua. Two mirror matches coming up. Two times China versus Korea. Will the dominance of South Korea continue, or will China cause a big upset because it's two absolute heavyweights versus Colorful and Linguagua. So stay tuned. We're going to be right back with WGL Summer. <laughs> 